Oh, that was such an abrupt transition. I've got to fix that audio thing. Hey, so many technical issues. That's not what the name of this is. This is Legends of the Drowned Isles, a homebrew 5th ed D&D campaign, which we decided oh so long ago to stream online. I'm Mark the Encaffeinated One. I'm your host and slightly off-center uh, GM for this game. Uh, technical issues abound. They're all my fault because I set up all the technical stuff. Go me. But uh, hopefully the only technical problem we have so far is a foul roll of one once in a while from now on for this next session. We're playing in the lands of Omisha. This is an alt game. So if you have watched some of the previous episodes and wondering who are these new characters, well, it, uh, it's a game set a thousand years before the previous game because some of our players can't make it for the regular game. So we're playing a little alt game during the summertime. Plus, it allows us to play around with more technology, because that's always not removing all the hair from my head. <laughs> However, I'm, I'm only the GM. I have my collection of players with me, starting on my left. Please introduce yourselves and your characters. Uh, my name is Patrick. Uh, I am playing uh, Silas Marsh, uh, illusionist. My name is Marie. Uh, I am playing Annie. Uh, she is a mastermind. Hey, I'm Nax, and I'm playing Medrek, half orc cleric. All right, and I'll be playing the part of the GM as I slowly get all my windows in place. Just to give you caught up on what happened in the previous session, our trio had been out of the Wintrip farm uh, and had dealt with a uh, a nasty ghost problem. The ghost turned out to be not quite so nasty after all ghost of a young woman named Sedona, who seemed to be suffering the same great confusion that everybody across the land has had, that uh, memories of events in the last few months, few years, it's really not possible to say. Some sort of great cataclysm happened, and it was some sort of warfare, which Medric, as a soldier, had been returning from. Uh, Silas lives in the town of Ulthwater, which is where the other two wound up, any on uh, a kind of a tour, I guess you might say, uh, not from Ailthwater directly. But after at the winter farm answering Sedona's questions and trying to help her out, the next day you follow the clues that you were actually there to find some missing cows. And after following the clues and meeting up with Sedona, you did actually uh, see the cows just outside of a crumbling ancient temple. Two of the stolen cattle were tied up out front, and two bandits were outside arguing about them. The group proceeded to scare these bandits, drawing the attention of even more bandits inside. The battle seemed to be going badly, especially when one of the bandits summoned a fearful creature called a roper. But the summoner was unable to hold the spell during the battle, and during this fight, Sedona seemed to transform from a wispy ghost of a young woman to a fearful, vengeful terror. In the end, most of the bandits fled, leaving a half-orc named Arneve, one of the two bandits that uh, Medric had recognized as other returning soldiers. Sedona appeared to return to normal after being calmed down. During the fight, Annie had been separated, rescuing the cows from one of the bandits. At that point, a shadow being with bright, hard, cold, diamond-like eyes appeared before her. It observed her and seemed amused at what it found there commenting that, and yes, I actually watched it, so I got the language correct. Interesting to find you in my domain. I will make use of your presence. You will become a tool for me, whether you want to or not. I hope your parents come quickly. Somewhat disturbed by that, it's then vanished. Having stopped the bandits and let, letting Arneve go, Sedona pleaded that she still felt unsettled and blamed her transformation on the fact that her rest was ruined. The group managed to push aside some rocks, blocking a larger room, and Sedona felt it was the right way to go. Inside this dim room, I want to emphasize that it is dim, so you do have to make sure you have, I believe you have a, uh, a bullseye lamp out at the moment to help illuminate the room. But as the light scanned across the room, First, of course, the most brilliant thing that shone was this m massive statue in the center of a woman with up upturned arms and wings that seemed to be folded just over her shoulders. Uh, strangely enough, the left hand of the statue was missing. Uh, as the light permeated, you realize that the walls of the room were covered with carved faces, 
many of them with outstretched arms as well. Uh, thinking that they might represent the dead, they searched for any that matched Sedona's face. There were a few that looked the same, but they were shocked to realize that the statue in the middle itself resembled her as well. Amongst the statues, you found three, three sayings, and I've actually included those as uh, elements in the journal. You can look them up. Uh, you should have all access to uh, the, those three riddles. Uh, written in uh, in uh, an ancient tongue as well as a modern, more common tongue. Uh, and the three riddles were, uh, if I can find them on Just my to point own. out as well, uh, viewers can find those in the watchers group. Yes, I did. I did remember one thing. I, <laughs> I actually got those. I remembered after I was reminded, which is not really mm -hmm. a victory on my part from memory, but uh, I did manage to uh, put those up. I didn't put the map up because I realized we're not quite done with this map. I will put the map up of the, of the Wintrip Barn uh, next time, uh, potentially. Cool. I, I put the map of the Sunken Coast. Uh, oh, awesome. That's a preliminary map, still in progress. So, so the three riddles, we'll call them riddles. They're confusing, so I'm not really sure exactly what they mean. The longest of the three. I am my father's legacy and my mother's delight. I am the window and the mirror. In me, there is my world. Through me, there is the world. I carry the weight of my sorrow and the height of my joy. The second riddle. Yours is the opposite of mine, and mine is the opposite of what's missing. Bring me yours. And thirdly. To hold my past in your hands, press lightly upon the present. With those to puzzle over, we now rejoin the scene in this dimly lit room, lit primarily by a bullseye lamp, uh, which only, uh, if you know what a bullseye lamp is, it, it, it actually shines light in a very narrow cone and it can be shut down. Uh, it's not great for eliminating an entire room, but you can swing it around. Uh, I want you to imagine this room as it is. No windows. And what doors there had been, except for the one that you came in, are entirely blocked by stone. Even the one that you had come in itself, uh, blocked by stone, mostly, except the part you had cleared out. As the light sweeps over, it is a disturbing shadow after shadow of outstretched hands in various shapes. Some of the hands are palm outward, others clasped in fists. Still more are pointing. A few have the, the thumbs up or sideways or even down. Uh, some have the palms cupped in front of them. So a wide variety of, of shapes and, uh, and configurations. The faces themselves, although simplified stone, it's easy to pick out that some represent uh, elves, some represent dwarves, there's uh, halflings, even half-orcs, uh, gnomes. Different races are represented here. But as you look around on the faces, there is a, a lot of individuality in each of the carvings. And the carvings of the dwarves, for example, the beard braids are represented very clearly and very uh, elegantly. In the uh, carvings of the elves, while the faces themselves typically are smoother and they don't have facial hair, there's ways that the, the eyes are carved to be proper shapes. In most of these, you see carved stone eyes, but there are some who, spookily enough, have nothing but hollows where their eyes would be. As you've looked around the room, you've identified a number of these that seem to be, uh, seem to resemble Sedona. There are five of them, in fact, scattered around the room. They have slightly different configurations. Also remember that the statue is the base, or, or sorry, on top of a base of a fountain, which is overflowed and flowed into the room. The water itself seems to be cool and clear, uh, but it is trickling outward. Of the six that resemble Sedona, are you taking a closer look? Oh, yeah. Sure. Okay. Do they each have different, like, hand positions, or...? They do. They do. The first one you find uh, has eyes of stone. The left hand and the right hand are both palmed outward, but, or uh, rather, fist outward, but thumbs facing inward. So kind of an even... Even thumb sign. Let me get on the mic on the on the thing here. Can I do it properly? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I can lean back here. Seem like that. Uh, the second one you find uh, has 
Um, let me see if I make sure I get the right ones here. Um, where am I looking at here? Yes, uh, Eyes of Stone. Another one that you find has Eyes of Stone as well. The left hand is cupped, and the right hand is a fist. The third one you find is a... It has the hollow eyes. Uh, it is missing its left hand. It looks like it was broken right off at the wrist, um, and jagged stone still remains. Uh, the right palm is outward and up. I, I had hoped I would have time or find the appropriate sort of statues. I was looking for a whole bunch of hands. I did not find them. It's kind of annoying. <laughs> uh, the next one you find has hollow eyes as well, but both hands are presented as tight grasp, grasped, grasped fists. Uh, let's see. Uh, the fourth one you find. Fourth one? I'm doing these out of order from my own list, which was a stupid mistake. Uh, has once again the hollow eyes. This time the left palm is held up and the right hand is a cup uh, or cupped. And I think there's one more. Is anybody taking notes? Can you read back to the to. ones you, you have already? <laughs> hmm? Can you read back the ones you have already to make sure that I haven't missed one? Um, I don't. I fell behind there because dyslexic in writing. But I have the the one with the fists like this. Um, the With thumbs in, uh, no, yeah, thumbs inward, uh, left hand cupped, right fist with stone eyes, both those ones, hollow hand or er, hollow eyes missing the left hand, and I forget what the right hand was doing on that one, and then the two fists with hollow eyes, okay, are the four that I have written down. So, the one with the missing left hand is a right palm, uh, turned upward. And the last one, which I think I did say, but I, that's why I got it confused. Uh, once again, with the hollow eyes, its left pan, palm is up, and in its right hand, it holds a, or is cupped. So right hand face, facing up, left cup, or right cup. Left palm up, yes. Left palm. As you move around the room and begin to examine these and try to make sense, each of you finding different ones and calling out to the other, I found another one. Uh, and then describing what you see, making note of where they are placed around the room. Uh, you hear Sedona gasp and with surprise. No, 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 no. And she begins to fly upward, seemingly drawn into the statue itself. The statue begins to move ever so slightly. The head of the statue looks down upon the three of you. It smiles, a warm smile. It has... Um, stone eyes and in every way resembles a statue but it is slightly animated a voice comes out of it similar to Sedona's but more confident uh, more more calm more experienced welcome acolytes to the temple are you ready to be tested tested rested maybe uh we just got tested by some jackasses outside. It doesn't seem to respond directly to the words you said. Next thing it says is, to enter the sanctuary of peace, you must solve these riddles. And it pauses. Oh, that's a riddle? No, I think the thing's right on the walls of the riddles. I thought it was just like statements that had to do with these people's religion. Probably. To have made it this far, you have already demonstrated some worth. But remember this one truth. All things begin with water. And the statue stops moving, almost as though it was a predetermined set of statements to be made to people coming into this room. Hmm. Well, things begin with I'm thinking that 
all things begin with fire, but I'm going to keep those thoughts to myself for now. <laughs> the water around the base of the statue begins to bubble and then starts to pour outward, quickly covering about a third of the floor. The water is cool and crisp. There's no smell of any staleness or or um, contamination. It just seems like pure water. We can still crawl out the hole, can't we? The hole seems to be there. Okie dokie. We'll cast that light cantrip on a rock that's like placed in a good position to light up most of the room. Okay. How broad is the light cantrip? I think it is a torch light. Maybe 30. Let me check. I remember this last week, but then I forgot because a week went by. <laughs> I'll just look at it up real quick, too. I believe it's torchlight, so something like a 30-foot radius. Yeah, it'll be enough to cover the room, but... Yeah, 20-foot radius. 20 and, and dim light for an additional 20 feet. Yeah, so you'll you'll be able to illuminate. If you place it kind of right on the, the statue itself or on a, on a rock that you place near the statue, uh, it will illuminate enough of the room that it's not hard to make out details. It's probably good that you still have that bullseye lamp, though, to make out any particular details if you need to. Yeah. Sedona has mm. not returned, but the statue has stopped moving. I'm looking at the statues, or at least the ones that look like Sedona. Like, Medrick would know a decent number of cleric spells, right? And some of them might have a... What's the word I'm looking for? Like, hand motions. Somatic? Gestures, yeah. Yep. Gestures. Uh, Somatic, yeah. Do the hands, the way they're placed, represent any of those spells? Or would it be like motions that would be involved that I would have done before? Make basically? a religion check. Okay. Religion. Where's my sheet? I'll switch this over to the map page, even though it's not specifically a map problem at this point. Sedona has vanished. Am I still exhausted? Unfortunately, until you take a long rest or find another way to do it. Well, I'll get the 9 instead of a 19, unfortunately. So, for you, um, there are a lot of gestures used, but the, the, the key problem you're having is that gestures are, are, are motions that you make with your hands. Um, sometimes it's about where your body is placed in relation to those hands. Um, all of these hands are still. So while they're all representative of, of stages along the way, it's impossible to say what part of a gesture is because a hand outward could be a hand rising or a hand falling or a hand turning in a circle but caught at that instant, all you're gonna see is a hand open. But it feels as though the gestures are somehow significant. Hey Silas, do you recognize any of those gestures? Or any? What about you? Old of you to assume I know anything about gestures. I'm a talker, not a mover. There was a jester in town for a little while, but he kept insulting people too much. <laughs> Wait, you mean you weren't the jester? <laughs> oh, no, no. I just do shows. Um, the water is spread across the floor at this point. And one of the strangest elements right now you're seeing is that the water does not flow out around the rocks and the side doors that are not watertight and doesn't flow out through the gap in the door that you guys had created. Instead, it starts to pile upward and rise. Well, I'm going to stick my hand out the hole we came in and see if I can stick my hand out the hole we came in. As your hand approaches that hole, you find an invisible barrier has gone up. Uh-oh. What? We're trapped in here. Just go out the hole. Yeah. <laughs> I slap at the hole. Your hand just sort of stops. Yeah. I think this is a time-limited test. You better think fast. She said a challenge. I thought it was going to be a fight. 
Not um, everything fight. Um. The faces we saw of hers, were any of the pairs of hands both palm up like someone might be presenting something? Uh, no. There was one. Well, that was my only idea. <laughs> there was one where the left hand was missing and the right palm was up, and the other one where the left palm was up and the right hand was a cup. I'm going to go over to the one where the hand is missed. Like, does it look like the hand was broken off, like there was a hand, or there just was never a hand? The rest of the yeah, arm fine. is presented there, but it does look like it was broken off at the wrist. Like it's okay. jagged and not stoned, or not stone. Color. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go lightly press on the right hand and the left arm and see if they move. I'll press down and up and side to side and whatnot. Okay, just checking with my notes here. Wow, I gotta highlight these or something. I'm missing them completely. All the technical issues have just sapped my brain of memory. All right, here we go. Uh, okay. Uh, the the arm. Uh, so describe that again. Sorry, you were you were going to grab both arms. Well, it has what right hand out and left hand is uh, missing. Missing. Yeah. Right, so right. I'm gonna the... kind of reach out on both limbs and kind of gently press down or press okay. up, press to the sides, see the, if they uh, move. The right hand is palm outward, facing upward. And as you oh, okay. as you put right, some fine. as you put some pressure on them, the left arm does not it, it, it does not move at all. It's it's solid stone. The right palm seems to waver a little bit as if it can move. I try pushing in on it. High five. It it feels like it's it's uh it feels like there there's something catching on it. You also notice that the hand itself uh seems to have articulation as though it can grasp onto something. Hmm. Um where in the room are each of these statues? Okay, actually I should have done that before. I knew there was something I forgot. Do, do, do. I will use. Uh, what do I have? Yeah, I'll use this guy. It's gigantic, but I will resize it. Oh, it doesn't want to resize. All right. No, you can. Uh, if, if you're using a grid, you can only make it as small as the. the oh, grid right. Size. I actually know that it's false. You can uh, right click and change its dimensions manually. Mm. I've also got that the wrong. Yeah, if you use the reset size. Uh, uh, no, it's just dimensions. Oops. It, if you like, right click and go into the uh, advanced settings. Mm -hmm. advanced. Set there should be set dimensions or something yep. like that. Yeah. So you want to put uh, 35 pixels. I wonder, I, I wonder if I can do 0. 0.5. Yeah. I wonder if that would work. Hey, it did work. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, I think you can only put it in the top uh, left corner. Yeah. Of the grid, well, this yeah. will give you an approximation. They're, they're not. Uh... You can alt and move it off the grid, though. Uh, oh yeah, that's right. I can do that. There we go. All right. Sorry, I've been I've been helping someone else set up. I absolutely uh... appreciate it because <laughs> I have not played around with the stuff nearly enough. All right. Uh... I've had nothing to do, so I've been uh, setting up the the roll twenty stuff for a game that I play in because the D the DM is an essential worker, so hasn't had the time to set things up. So I'm just like, I have nothing better to do. That's uh, that's awesome, actually. That's that's quite awesome. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to label these. Uh, will be the easiest way to label them. I'll just label them. Uh, 
I'm not like thinking, thinking. Um, so we're not like using up time. I'm just writing down the riddles because I, I can't remember. Things. Well, again, the those those are actually available in your journal, where they should be. Mm -hmm. um, yep, they're there. Oh, we have a journal. Yep. Okay, so I'm gonna. Yeah, if you go to the chat window like... area up at the top, the second thing right beside the speech bubbles is journal and if you click on that they're there as pdfs oh, okay i didn't think to set this up earlier but this is probably going to be the way to do this uh, make sure i get these all right all right I've got all of these on here. Uh, I think that's all of them. Um, I don't know why, but we're not seeing the names, so. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just a second. They should start appearing here as I go through yeah. and set the. Yeah, although we can only see about half of some of the names yeah, because gonna, they go into the dark area. I'm going to move these in so you can see them, but assume they're basically right up against the, the far walls. Um, Can you see all of them now? Whoa, that one doubled in size. Um, Weird. I'm just gonna move my my thing here so we can see the words of that one, but I am still here. Was there five or six statues? There are six, five. including that one, right? Six, including the big statue. Yes. Oh, okay. So I'm just gonna double check to make sure I've labeled these correctly. Real quick. All right. Uh, this one we cannot see what the right hand is doing. Okay. How about now? Yeah. Many thank. Okay. Um. Also, bottom one we can't read. You okay? Oh, you. A bit better now. Uh, sorry, I, every time you've asked me, I've had to restart my checking. <laughs> uh, sorry. No, no problem. Uh, just letting you know why it's taking me a little longer than it should. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, and I didn't highlight one. That's why I wasn't seeing it on my own friggin' screen. There we go. Uh, I think I have one duplicated. Yes, I do. This one should not be that. That should be... Okay, I think that's all of them now. And the one that says left thumb, right thumb is the hands are fists, but the thumbs are out and the uh, thumbs are pointing inward towards each other. Like that. Oh. Yep, that's it. Oh, here we go. Like a motorcycle. Yeah, like gripping a motorcycle, <laughs> an ancient fantasy motorcycle. Perfect. <laughs> Okay, and again, assume that they're actually up against the wall that they're uh, yeah. that they're next to. Um, the ones on the sides are, are far up against the left and right walls, and the ones at the back are actually against the back walls. Yeah. Okay. Um, and this one is here. 
Uh, it's actually here. That one's there. Okay. Yeah. Cool. There's nothing along the interior uh, front wall where you came in, basically. Okay. So. So just to recap, what what uh, Silas just did. Uh, yes. He went to the one with the missing left hand and the right palm and held his hands on it, noted that the arm with the missing left hand did not move at all. The right palm seemed to shake slightly, and the hand itself seems to have a little, little articulations. You can see the fingers actually moving ever, ever so slightly, mostly in response to your own movement of it. Okay. The water continues to pour in across the floor. Now, uh, the one that has like the thumbs pointing to each other, I'll try to like rotate the wrists to make the point up. Okay. You grab onto the two arms, and you do note that they do feel like they will move, but there is resistance. Hey guys, these things move. Yeah. Does anybody see a broken hand somewhere on the floor? I'm going to take a look around. Okay. Or stone eyeballs. At this point, the water has completely covered the floor about an inch deep, so it's starting to seep into your boots a little bit. You kind of swish through the water. There is a bit of debris here and there. It looks like debris from the statue itself. Uh, it looks like possibly the, the part that's leaking from the fountain uh, seems to have been smashed at one point. Uh, maybe deliberately, you're not really sure. But it doesn't look like regular wear wear and tear. There are no real noticeable chunks though of stone. Nothing that seems to resemble a hand at least. Okay. As you look around the room, the water is cold and feels almost chilly. I'm going to see if I can move the statue in the middle. Okay. Make a strength roll. Athletics if you have it. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Where are which things? There we go. Da, da, da. Ooh. That would be a zero, no a one. <laughs> As you grip onto the statue, you realize that it is extraordinarily heavy. Uh, up close, you can see it's made from a very, uh, very smooth marble, very well made, uh, and does not budge at all under your touch. Mm. The statue begins to move, though, and looks down at you. And their features don't change much, but you get the impression that they're almost... Uh, a little bit concerned. <laughs> it's a very slight motion in, in the in the brow, um, and there's a a patient voice that comes out. An offering of water is often the best way to treat your guests. And then it stops moving again. Mm -hmm. I'll just like bend down and. Splash some water up at her, I guess. Okay. The water splashes nicely against the stone, giving it a nice glistening look. It seems to almost um, sparkle a little bit as the water hits it. Then just um, flows down the side. In my bag, I think I have a... Um, actually, I don't. Never mind. Um, <laughs> I am going to... Just like grab some water and put it in um, the cup pan of this one. Okay. I don't know. Uh, See if the, that does anything. The water does pool in the hand and stays there. Mm -hmm. Does not seem to move or change. Okay. Uh, I'll do the same thing to that one. So okay. I might as well. Does does it look like it should it should leak out or? It looks as though when you take a closer look at the palm of the hand, it's cleverly mm -hmm. uh, carved such that it actually is a cup, and will hold water. Oh. And as you pour some water into that, 
uh, cup, the uh, cup lowers ever so slightly. There's a grating sound of stone on stone as it begins to, I gotta make sure I get my left to my right correctly here, uh, as it begins to descend slightly. And that one with the left cup and the right fist, the right fist opens as the fingers peel back to reveal a palm-sized red gem. It's actually a ruby, a fairly good size. This would pay quite handsomely and maybe some of the things the bandits were looking for. It's just sitting there. Do you take it? Um. Actually, she didn't. Sorry, not palm sized. It would be about the size of, of the uh, the meaty part of your thumb. So the size of an eyeball, approximately. Like. Uh, yeah, approximately. Um. I'll look at everybody else, and should I take it? Yeah. Mm. I guess so. I mean, we might not want to leave here with it, but it seems yeah. to be part of the puzzle. Maybe it fits in the statues with the hollow eyes, like where their eyes should be. Maybe. Okay, do you take the stone? Maybe we have to go to the, the main statue? I don't know. The main statue does have st eyes of stone. Okay. Yeah. I, I didn't didn't mean put it in the eyes. I, I meant like, is there any like thing that would would look like I would have to like give her the what we find? Are you gonna take a closer look at the statue then? Yep. Okay. Uh, make an investigation roll. Did you take the stone by the way? Uh, I would have. Okay. After you pull the stone up off of the. Uh, palm, you see that it actually is pointed on the bottom and would sit into the palm very carefully. You hear the sound of rock turning once more, grating upon grating, and as you turn around to try to figure out where it is, it's not far from where Medric had been standing, and you see the left hand of the statue with stone eyes and both thumbs uh, turn upward. Cool. I, I guess that means we did good. As you look around the base of the statue, the statue itself, the, the main statue, it is exquisitely made. Um, you can see no signs of tool marks. It, it's almost as though it were uh, a living being that's somehow captured in stone. Um, but as you look around the base, uh, the base is about three foot high and squarish. And um, it looks like it's stacked stone. Like there's two or three pieces of stone, not one solid piece. You got a two. I'm being generous, uh, <laughs> but it it, do, it doesn't look like a solid piece of stone. Hmm. Something about it just draws your eye, but you're not able to focus on it. Maybe because the water now at this point has just crept over your boot, your boots. Hmm. I don't think we need to put this in the eyes because. Uh... Mm hmm. If they are eyes, then there might be a second one of those to find to get a thumbs up, and then maybe we put them in a certain one. I don't know. I don't know, because two of them don't have eyes. Yeah, I'm so guessing only one of them. We probably have to find a way to get the second one, and then we have to figure out which of the two missing-eyed ones we put the two eyes in. Yeah. Or it's something completely different. I don't know. Um, Does it look like it would fit in the eyes of the, like holding it beside the eyes of one of the hollow ones? As you hold it up beside, it looks like it would be a perfect fit. Okay. Um. So there's water in this one. This one gave us the thing. This one putting water in it didn't. It moved, but it didn't give us anything. And it now this one's pointing up with the right it, it did move, but it give us anything. Right. Yeah. Uh, um. Try putting it in the one that has both fists. Maybe one of its fists will open and drop something. Hmm. Sure. So I'll put it in the eye of this one. 
Okay. Which eye? They're both open. Uh, uh, it came from the right fist of that one, so I'm going to put it in the right eye of that one. Okay. You put it that in, and it kind of slots in. Nothing happens. As you look at it, you from the sparse amount of light that's here, uh, you can see yourself reflected in the uh, in the ruby. Hmm. Where that didn't seem to do anything, I'll try to take it out. Okay, it pops out pretty easily. I'll try putting it in the other one. <laughs> okay, as you slot it into the left hand side, um, part of the riddle comes back to you. Uh, I am the window in the mirror comes back to you. Uh, and a little small stone on stone click happens as the ruby lands and lights deeper into the socket. A small glow emits from the uh, from the ruby. Make sure I get the right one here. Do, 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 do. That was this one? Yes. Uh, the uh, eye yeah, is in this one, yes. Yep. The left fist opens. And somehow, you're not sure how this would have worked, but there is a uh, small... Uh, stick essentially or it looks like it's metal uh, that expands out when the hand is opened revealing uh, something about about uh, eight inches long it looks metallic although it's carved on the outside in a pattern looks like a, a spiraling wave at the top end of the stick there appears to be a, a small amber gem and it looks like the amber gem moves slightly as you as you pull as you take the stick. I'm presuming you take the stick. Yep. Yeah, before it falls into the water. <laughs> as you take it, the wall begins to rumble. Please place yourselves in the room as you would be. I was over here last time. I was going to go next to the other statue because I was going to try th throwing water at it. Okay. The wall begins to rumble and shake. And you see uh -oh. the uh, faces on either side of the face you've placed the gem in. Uh, both start to shake as well. Um, and stepping out of the wall, as in the wall itself, all the faces and the arms sort of collab uh, collect together you see a figure, a squat figure about three feet tall that uh, uh, is uh, the two side faces kind of collapse inward, giving it this three-faced effect. On the right-hand side, you see the face of a dwarf. In the center, you see the face of an elf. Uh, well, essentially, it's Sedona's face, but it's more elf-like than, uh, than human. And on the other side, a square-jawed human face as the creature steps forward. Just gotta put that on the right layer. That's the only icon that I had, but it's it's more or less uh, correct. Uh, bring it to the front if I can. There we go. Um, its uh, center torso is composed of a couple of different faces that are kind of set set uh, together, and you can see a slight glow within. Uh, you hear the uh, swarthy voice if you will, and Swarthy is probably the wrong word, you hear the, the gruff and deep voice of a dwarf on the, the uh, right-hand side of the face uh, snort and snicker. Ah, it's about time. I didn't know if you'd pass the first stage. Welcome, Acolytes, welcome. And the face on the left-hand side in a more timid, uh, no, more thoughtful human voice I'm not sure they're acolytes. I'm not sure what they're doing here at all. And the one on the face in the center, which has the voice of Sedona. They are here with purpose, or they would not have gotten this far. Welcome. Hey, 
Sedona? Uh, no. We were brought here by Sedona. All three voices speak together. No. We are Gamatris. Yes. Gamatris? Gamatris. We are three as one. I was a great teacher. As was I. And I too, once. Now, I can answer a few questions for you, because it is time for your lessons. But as the water is rising, I only have chance or time for three. I cannot answer all things. No, even if we wanted to, there are things we cannot answer. But, if you choose your, answer, your questions carefully, I can help you with the rest of the test. Does this statue have the gem in one eye? Yes, it does. Okay. It's got the uh, red gem in the left eye. Magic. And we stick with the amber gem. It. Yeah, you've got the stick with the amber gem on it. Hmm. I'm trying uh, real hard to like ask about the water, but without it counting as a question. <laughs> Uh. Brain is forgetting what the the things are. It would seem the time is not on your side. Nope. We have centuries. I'll splash water on the statue that's like in the middle right of the map because it has an open palm, right? Okay. I put it, water in that one as well. Yeah, the the and cupped the cupped hand has water in it. Uh, and the the you splash up water on top of the stone, it seems to splash onto it and flow downward again sort mm -hmm. of revealing a little bit of trickle of, of light and reflection, small crystals embedded within the stone or something that only really get revealed underneath the uh, the uh, the presence of, of water, perhaps. Could be a, a special kind of building material, maybe. Um. I always hated these kinds of tests, but it is necessary. That's the human voice speaking. But who are you? Let me ask you a question. You said you were here from Sedona? We, we followed her. We're here for to try to find out what happened here. She found us. Find some cows. Cows? What the hell is this about cows? Some cows were also stolen. If you were brought here, Sorry, it was with like purpose. I'm just reading stuff and it's taking a minute. No, that's right. <laughs> if you were brought here, it was for a reason. So, uh, guys, should we just ask them, ask them for all the steps we need to take to solve the rest of this test? Do you think they're not going to tell us? They'll answer three questions and they'll give us clues, but they're not going to solve it for us. But what if they did? But they flat out said they won't. They said that they'll give us clues. Hmm. The first riddle references eyes. The second one maybe is talking about the one with the missing no i don't think so if the missing one is broken off why would the poem know about it uh, yeah and i'm pretty sure riddles uh, the third riddle was the one you've solved to hold my past in your hands press lightly upon the present mm -hmm. is there one statue that looks like it's ready for a high five i've already done that 
more um, more of the low five. They have their hand out flat, but no, none that have their hand up straight. Because what I thought of when I put this one in was I am the window and the mirror from the first one. Yeah, I think that's referencing the fact that it's an eye. Eyes are the windows to the soul. You can see yourself in them. I am my father's legacy, my mother's delight. Um, Gimitris begins to uh, pace around the, the statue. Annie, as it passes by, you can see that behind the, the uh, masks that are its center body, there does appear mm -hmm. to be clear crystal. And within the crystal, you can see, not clearly, but there's something inside there. Mm -hmm. It looks up admiringly at the statue. Sorry to cut you off, Pat. Hmm. And I think Riddle C was, she pressed lightly upon the present by pouring water in. It let her hold its, uh, their past, which is the eye. Although, that's iffy. Yeah, the... Temple, uh, and the, the second Riddle... Mine is the opposite of what's missing. That also could be referencing the missing eyes. Bring me yours could be bring the ones that we find, but how to get the second one, I don't know. Um. The middle face looks so, up at the statue, kind of sighs. Um, what does the metal stick with an amber gem look like? Is it like a stick with a gem in it, or is it like a stick with a gem at the end? It looks as though the gem is on the the end of the stick. Um, do you uh, do you examine it closer? Yeah. Okay. Uh, make a uh, let's call this an investigation roll. Seven. Seven. Um, as you're turning it over, double digits with, with it's got a, twenty. It's got a weird weight to it. Uh, mm -hmm. It feels heavier at the far end, which is actually the smaller end. It tapers ever so slightly. And as you're fiddling around with it, your thumb comes in contact with the, the gem. And then the stick doesn't move. You can't even make it move. It's like it's stuck where it is. Hmm. That's weird. If I let go of it, it stays in the air. It holds still in the air. Interesting. We could just fight them, you know. That would be the simplest approach. I don't know if that's really necessary. But we could have fun with it. That you is definitely talking to itself. I would prefer not being murdered. Thank you. Um, Same. Or drowning. Same. Um, you're... Slightly on the present. The water now is almost two inches deep. And the weirdest is if where I you can see it. Hmm? If I touch the gem again, does it start moving again? It comes free in your hand. Yep. Interesting. Um, that's weird. Uh. Can I try putting this in the hand of one of the open palms? You certainly can try. Which one? Um, might as well just go to this one. Okay, the one that's missing its left hand. Yeah, I'll put it in the hand that's there. Okay, you set it down on top of the hand. Nothing seems to happen. Although the palm does move slightly as if a weight was placed on it. It's not solid. Okay. And if I touch the button, like the, the amber on it. The stick stays in place. Nothing seems to change. Okay. I will pick it up again by touching the, the thing. Okay. Again, it comes free in your hand. No problem. And then I'll try it with this one. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, that's with the left palm. You filled the right cup with water already. Yep. Uh, once again, you place the the uh, the, the stick on the uh, hand. Press the button. Doesn't seem to change anything. Mm. You know, when I was a teacher, they'd always ask me questions. I don't know where they get these students these days. Hush. You have to know the right questions to ask. That is wisdom. I'm going to check where the water is coming out. Okay. We don't want to waste questions if we don't know what to ask. So, uh, uh, Silas, you take a closer look at the at the statue. Make an investigation roll. Okay. At first, it's a little deceiving. There is a pool of water around the base of, the, of where the statue actually is, and it does appear that that water is overflowing somewhat onto the sides. But then you kind of realize that there's additional water coming out from between uh -huh. the two slabs, which are the base of the statue. As you take a closer look at them, too, you also notice that the two slabs are not quite aligned with each other, almost as though they have moved or can move. Mm. You also, uh, one further thing, uh, you notice by the corner where Annie is standing, there appears to be a small hole. Uh, it is about, um, uh, about, I guess, would we call it a large marble sized, uh, which seems to go inward somewhat. Uh, you're not sure exactly how deep it is. It's filled with water at the moment. Hmm. Can I see the uh, stick, Annie? Sure. If you, and I'll explain to the the amber yeah. thing. I'll stick the non-amber end of the stick into the hole and see how far it goes. Yeah, it seems to go all the way in, except for about a little bit, leaving it exposed. Just enough lip that you could take it out again, probably. Hmm. But no change otherwise. I have a thought. Mm -hmm. um, Medrick, you're probably significantly stronger than I am. Well, yeah. Um, would you be able to turn the statue? Actually, I take the stick back out first. Would you be able to turn the statue that's here? It doesn't seem properly aligned. I think it can move, but I'm not nearly strong enough to do so. Yep. <laughs> Did you guys actually hear that over the microphone? Yeah, so actually. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll just... Um, I thought you went like this at first. A bit and <laughs> grab onto the statue and align it according to Silas's, best, uh, according to Silas's directions. Okay. I think we should just try to turn it, see if it'll turn. Make, but, yeah, uh, make an athletics check. And I will assist him, so it gets advantage. Okay. So that means I get not disadvantage. <laughs> yes. Woo. This is a useful... You break out into a little bit of a yawn, trying to uh, turn the statue, but... Athletics. That one actually has, like, a nice modifier. Eve! Hey! Uh, the two of you together with uh, with uh, Medric probably grasping it fairly close to the, the base, and Silas kind of shoving a little bit from the side, the statue begins to shift slightly but then seems to catch on something as if it's held back internally but does appear like it should move the weird thing is it should move a little easier than what you expected with the weight of it here with what silas had tried earlier it seems like it, it's heavy but it does move the other thing is you do notice that the two layers of the bottom move independently of the statue so the statue turns a little bit, and the base in two sections moves slightly differently. I think once we can find the other eye, this is our way out, or in. Cool. But I don't know how to find the other eye. Maybe the first one was found in a fist. We've got two... No, we don't have any fists, because they're walking around currently. Okay, huh. Hmm. 
this statue isn't this person, right? That this person came out of the wall. The this was them. The hollow eyes where this you put was. the eye in, the left fist and sorry, not left fist, right fist. I'm back. Uh, nope, that was the one. That was the one. So pardon me if I if I just said that differently, but that is the one that moved out and was Gamatris. Is Gamatris currently walking around? Okay. So this fist is no longer in the mix. So there's no right. Hmm. Uh, I think some useful information would be the status of this missing hand. Yeah, might be worth it. Okay, are you going to ask something directly? I am indirectly asking the rest of the group before I ask a specific question. Yeah. The missing hand or where the other eye is. They won't tell us where the other eye is. They're not going to give us the answers. They wouldn't be teaching us anything. There's one thing I, I've learned in my studies is that a teacher isn't going to tell you the answers if they want you to learn. Um, in my studies, I just get burned. Silas comes over here. You know, for some reason, I can see out the wall. Um, can I? Uh, one of the the hands with the thumbs turned up. I think it was the left one. Can I turn the right one up? Uh, you grab onto it, and it does look. It does feel like it can turn, but it resists your your casual turning it. Okay, something triggers this one. We felt. I could feel that the the right palm on this one could move around. How is the palm arranged on that one, by the way? Like, is it like this or like no flat this? out, flat out? Okay, so this way. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So Gematris, on this missing, this statue is missing a hand. What was its position, and did it move? Ah, interesting question. Sort of a historical one, so I suppose it's me that has to answer that. Well, the hand was never there in honor of Our Lady up above. That represents the end of your questions. Hmm. Okay, so that one was never there. What was that about the lady up above? Our wonderful lady here. No, but like, no, no, the DM, what was the statement <laughs> oh. that you said about the lady? Um, the hand was never there, much like our lady up above to represent her. And Your lady up above was never there? She lost her hand in service. Before oh, the statue okay. was made. You never very were very good at giving direct answers. It's not really my point to give direct answers, now is it? Now, would you both please get along? It's long enough being in this form without having the two of you bickering. One final thing uh -huh. I'll say, because apparently I don't speak clearly. That's the last statue you have to deal with because it honors her directly. Okay, the last statue. Okay. So the one over here, we've already dealt with the left cup and the right fist. This one is the left palm and the right cup. Put some water in the cup. Yeah, she already did. I thought it was the other one. I did it on this one first and then this one. Okay. Um this one because uh because it's not there, could you just like change its color or, so or something? Uh I'm just a very going back to it. Sure. So this one that's what you talked about? Yeah. Yeah, the one that's not actually there anymore. Yep, I will add an X across it. Awesome. 
Thank you. So that one. And I'll add on this one as well because you've already dealt with it. Wasn't that? Um. Most likely, we do something with this one that will open up or thumbs up the other one. Yeah. I'll, I'll just like high five it with moderate force. See what happens. <laughs> low five, medium five, whatever. Yeah, slap skin, uh, low five, and it moves slightly. You get the impression that it is meant to move a little bit, but it, the the gesture you've given it doesn't seem to uh, to have any impact on it. Uh, make an insight roll. Inside. I believe that's plus two. No, that's plus four. Holy shit. Okay. Mm hmm. Wisdom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The wins. I don't know if I had enough insight myself to find. Oh, here we go. Okay. Fuck. So that's uh, one, which comes oh. up to five. Yeah, it stings your fingers a little bit. Uh, Silas, like high fives. Silas leans in and uh, tries moving the hand around in other directions or turning it so it might be hand, like palm to the side. Which one? The one that he just slapped. Okay. And that was the one with the full right cup? Yes. Okay. Mm, um, that one's the last one we need to deal with, so I'm going to come over here. It does not appear to turn or twist, but it does seem like it would go down or up. Is it being stopped from going down and up? It feels like it is. It feels like there's. it gets a little bit of distance, but then stops. Almost as though it, it wants something first. And again, you notice the fingers are somewhat articulated as if they can move a little bit. I'm going to put the stick in the left palm and try to curl the fingers around it. Okay. You place the stick. Do you activate it? Um... No. I mean, I haven't did nothing. Yeah. yeah. Um, you place it carefully on the palm. It tries to roll off a little bit because the palm is 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 uh, got a bit of a groove in it, but not one that fits the stick in particular. And when you bend the fingers fingers over and they do move easily, nothing happens. Actually, make an Arcana check. Oh, there you go. As you're watching it carefully and you're moving the, the fingers over, you notice that the fingers seem to half move on their own and they tap out a pattern on the edge of what's, uh, what's placed in, in the palm and seem to be looking for a shape. Not finding it, they relax. And the whole thing seems to just relax as though it was on the edge of unlocking and then stopped. The conclusion you can draw from that is it was looking for a shape. And that was not it. I'm going to look closely at the shape of the palm and see if I can figure out what shape it was looking for. Okay. Make a... Uh, hmm. If you have it, stone working. <laughs> uh, or if you nope. have a crafting uh, profession. Uh, I have investigation. Yeah, uh, uh, we'll we'll go with investigation as you're kind of trying to measure it out a little bit. Okay. It would be something that is uh, kind of back. wide and flat. The, the, the ridges of the palm are kind of strange. The center of the palm is flattened, and the outer ridges of where the muscles would be are kind of curved a little bit. So whatever would sit there would be about palm-sized and probably round or square and flat. Hmm. Not something we found in here. What are we looking for? I think it, it maybe looks like a small disc or an amulet would fit here. Hmm. Hmm.
Did anybody pick up an amulet? No. The right palm on the one with the hollow eyes and the missing left arm. Mm -hmm. Can I pull that off? Can you pull off what? The palm? Can I pull on it so it comes off? Oh. Um, you can give it a tug, certainly. Make an athletics check. Mm -hmm. You give it a strong tug. It seems fairly well, uh, well connected. You do kind of notice that it, it does pull apart in sections as though it is not uh, one solid piece of stone. As though it is in fact several pieces of stone that have been connected together. A mechanism of some kind. Hmm. I mean, that's the last one we need to deal with. There's something before that. Yeah. I was just trying to think, is the other stuff doesn't... She check the eyes. The stone eyes, can we remove any of them? You can take some time to try to pry them out with a dagger or a knife or something? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it looks as though as you get closer to them, and you see the same thing when you repeat this process on each of them, the stone eyes are carved directly into the faces. Yeah. They're not They're okay. not uh, separate parts. So Annie tried putting water in the cup of the one in the middle, right? First thing, right? Yeah. I think she filled all of the cups that were there, yes. Okay. And it's, is it still full right now? Yep, it's holding. Okay. I'm going to take a look at the three-faced thing that's walking around. Okay. It's kind of looking at you at the same time. Every once How in a while, it's, it? it's about three feet tall. Okay. Uh, it's uh, it's weirdly shaped because it has multiple arms and multiple legs that were all composed of the things that were on the wall. And most of its body surface is covered in faces, except for the mm. back, which is somewhat crystalline. Uh, I'm going to look it all over and see if I can see if I notice anything that looks like it could fit there. Okay. Um, as you look it over, it, it sort of looks at you and its faces keep shifting. Uh, the one in the middle, the, the, the closest to Sedona seems to be impassive. The, uh, the dwarven face seems to smile at your, at your examination. And the other one seems uh, the more humanoid face seems to smirk. Uh, as you look it over, once again, you see this, this sort of crystalline space in its back that would be right behind the, the lower two faces that make up its chest. Uh, and there does appear to be something within, but the the crystal is opaque. Ah, now you're wondering, aren't you? Does this mean we're going to fight now? I would uh, hope not, but I don't know. Well, it would make the challenge more straightforward. I, uh, I look up uh, at it and uh, sort of indicating that I want to... Uh, touch the crystal part, I say, may I? Are you asking? Yes, I am. Then you may. I'm one of our questions. And that is question number two. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Um, yeah, I'm going to start poking and prodding at the crystal section that's opaque. Okay. See if it does anything. Uh, it, it appears to be solid crystal. And uh, light blue in color um, with uh, something that catches the light from time to time as it turns around. And in fact, it accommodates. It raises all of its arms and kind of spins around, giving you full access to see. Uh, it appears to be solid. And in fact, um, aside from a, what may be a stone core, somewhat like a, a spine in the center, uh, it's what makes up the entire center part. Okay, so it's a big hunk of crystal that's glowing yeah. from the inside? Slight okay. glow, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Well, it might be inside there. It wants to, like, One of them wants to fight us. Maybe it's something we have to remove. I mean, I'm not here to fight. Me neither. I'm here to figure out what's going on. 
There are other ways to get knowledge without fighting, but it depends on how clever you are. That's the human face. But I want to fight. Can I investigate this one to see if there's a spot that looks like it would fit the stick? Okay. You can take a closer look. Make an investigation check. Um, no, I would like to ask a question. Okay. Um, if I'm investigating specifically, like I'm feeling, trying to feel it out, mm -hmm. could I possibly do it with dexterity instead of intelligence? Yeah, that seems reasonable. Sure. Awesome. Let's make it sleight of hand in that case rather than investigation. Cool. Yeah. Twelve. There you go. As you're feeling around it, um, looking for any sort of openings, uh, unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be anything that looks like uh, a, a hole into which this would go. However, as you're kind of weighing out and touching the hands, it's pretty clear that both of the hands do twist and turn in a way that the one has already popped up. The other one does seem like it will at some point pop up. But even mm -hmm. when both thumbs are up, it does not look like it would hold the stick very well because the stick would be just a little bit too short to extend out beyond the, fit, the thumbs. Hmm. Yeah. I'm fairly certain if we find what fits the left palm in the mid one, that'll turn the lower one's right thumb up. No. And then we can go to the last one. Um. Hmm. Um. Gematris turns towards the rest of you, the center face, the calmer face, turning to you. If you do not want to face the path of war, and if the path of knowledge is not available to you, for whatever reason, you may seek the path of peace. Can I seek the path of entertainment? I am much better at that. Are you asking? No. 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 <laughs> well, in this case, we, we come in peace, and I'll see if he responds to anything, <laughs> or if anything unlocks if I say we come in peace. What would you ask of me in peace? Passage. That's not something I can grant. But I have other things. Stopping this water from flowing? That will come when the door is open. Opening the door? I cannot open the door for you. I'm going to need to take a small moment of break so you guys can discuss it amongst yourselves. Cool. So I have to go off to the water closet, I guess you might say, in this context. <laughs> so for the, for the moment, Gametris is simply observing all of you and kind of walking around. Uh, you can kind of imagine almost uh, inspecting what you're doing, uh, watching each little step you're doing, and there's a little hmm, 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 every once in a while coming from it. <laughs> Right, so I'm not being very useful. It's like whenever there's time limits on things, I just kind of panic and can't think. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out because there's no direct thing, place that looks like something would be hidden in the ones that we don't current that we haven't currently dealt with. Yeah, I might inspect the base of the statue again because, I mean, it can rotate. We just have to find out what's blocking it. I'm pretty sure what's blocking it is the mechanism that's controlled by the other stuff that we have. Okay. Um, that's probably the way out. It did suggest that the path of war was a way to get through this, which may mean that the thing is actually... The thing we need is uh, could be in it. But we don't we don't have the knowledge of how to get to it. We could fight it and take it from its body. Or the thing is that I'd be completely useless in that fight because I have nothing that can damage them. Yeah, me too. It's a construct. I get nothing. Um 
So that's why Annie is completely like not not wanting to fight. It's like out of game. I have nothing that will be able to damage this. Mm-hmm. Well, technically, you'd still do base knife damage, but it wouldn't be much. I mean, be more than what I'd do. Stone but... is usually resistant to most physical damage, like to stabbing, piercing damage. Yeah, although yeah. Uh, out of character constructs aren't necessarily. I mean, they might be resistant, but they just that still would be half damage. But uh... half of a D four is still half of a D four. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. So. I don't have the hit points or stamina to uh, deal with stabbing a statue with a dagger. Um, my thing would be really trying to figure out the piece route in this case, right? So it would be trying to figure out where the disc thing that goes into the middle thing is i'm pretty sure it's in the three-faced creature so how are we doing okay -ish. <laughs> <laughs> i didn't know if you could hear me there for a moment um. so we come in peace but then we have to exchange for a thing I just walk over to it. Please give me the disc. Are you commanding me to give you the disc? Yes. More like requesting. There's a moment where it steps backward. And the humanoid face goes, I don't know. The dwarven face says, it feels kind of wrong. Like they just sort of backed into it. And the third face says, We do not give in to demands, but we can give things to peaceful neighbors who ask. Could we please be small? Have the disc? We'll give it right back after we're done with it. Well, what do you think? I still want to fight them. We did not come here to fight. Uh, it was a pretty clever thing for them to do, even if they didn't quite know what they were asking for. No, we're asking for the disc. Granted, we don't know what the disc does, but I'm fairly sure that you have it. You would not have suggested the path of war as an option otherwise. I think we accept this as wisdom. Good luck. And you see the, the three faces fall outward like masks, and the inner structure of stone and crystal start to twist and, convert and, and convulse and crumble before your eyes. As what was Gametris turns to rubble, small crystals now jutting upward in a ring around what was contained in the center. The rubble flows into the water and seems to almost dissolve, as do the crystals. But the two things that remain, one appears to be a stone bowl carved with the images of water flowing on the outside. The other, unfortunately, appears to be in two pieces. It looks as though it is a, uh, a, uh, an hourglass. The glass, long ago since sh uh, shattered, broken into two pieces. Uh, the wood that once held the upper and uh, lower parts together, uh, the flat bottoms, the wood struts have broken, but the flat bottoms remain. Mm -hmm. The water flows over to the wall where the faces were and seems to flow upward towards the wall, carrying the rubble and debris, once again replacing where they had been. I'll call out to it, assuming they can hear me. It's like, thank you, peaceful thank you. I bet. Uh, hmm. I think it likely one of these discs fits in that palm. I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna take. If there's one that looked like it was the bottom one, I'll grab that. Of the sand timer. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, they both uh, seem like the top and bottom seem to be about the right same size. They're both made of looks like a, a fired clay. They have a little bit of inscription around the outside. Um, is that something I can read? What languages do you read? Basically common. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not uncommon. Draconic. Uh, oh, may I take a look at it? That's what I read. Okay. <laughs> it's written in Thieves' Camp. <laughs> if you can read this, please return to... Uh, <laughs> No, it is in fact written in Elvish. Uh, and it simply uh, says, I don't want to phrase this. Oh, actually, I got to refer to my own writing. Do, 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 do. Oh, shoot, where is it here? Ah, I didn't put it on my own, <laughs> on my own screen. I got to refer to a different screen. Silly me. <laughs> Oh, I changed that. Never mind. Uh, it's <laughs> I have to I have to ad lib that because I forgot that and I didn't change it. Um, essentially, it says only the past can be measured. Hmm. Um. Hold my past in, in your hands. Press lightly on the present. Yeah. So, are you just looking at it, or did you want to do something with it? Um. Well, after she's taken a look at it, I was going to take one of them and put it in its hand, see if I can fold the fingers over. Okay. Wait, and... wait. That's not right. That's not right. It says only the past can be measured. Water can be measured. I'm going to ignore Medrick at this point. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm just trying to figure out which one you said you were going to do that with. Stone eyes, left palm, right cup. Uh, the left palm was the one that had the fingers that could fold over like it was holding something, but is looking for something round. How big is the bowl, actually? The one with the waves on the outside. Uh, it is um, about, well, it'll fit in your palm. Oh, I'll try that first then, because that's not broken. Okay. <laughs> uh, you place it into the palm of the hand, and you start to fold the fingers over, but the fingers don't go nearly far enough to fit over the rim of the, the, the bowl. Okay, not the bowl. Okay, then I'll try the hourglass piece. Okay. You set the hourglass piece down on the uh, palm and begin to fold the palm's fingers upward. The fingers latch on to the edge of the hourglass. And you notice that, that because of the way that the shape of the hourglass was and the shape that fit the palm, it only could really fit in one direction, such that one of the fingers is still up slightly where it would catch on the uh, remaining stem of the side of the hourglass. And it holds there. It holds firm. Can we turn it? That one does not seem to be moving. The other, mm. the other hand is filled with water. Can I turn that one? As you grab onto that hand, it doesn't turn and doesn't seem to spill the water, but ev but the gentle pressure of your hand lowers it and it starts to sink downward and you hear a uh, gentle click ha ha i was high-fiving the wrong hand uh beside you on the other side where the other hand has down turned upward the other hand turns upward Can make sure i get my order of operations going here i'll look at it notice that and give it some thumbs back in return <laughs> peace yeah we good Okay. There is a rumbling sound from around the room. Uh-oh. The water begins to bubble and shake ever so slightly. 
uh, and then suddenly emerging from the center of the room. I almost clicked the wrong thing. Oh, yeah, Gamma Trist is now. Good Lord. Good Gamma Lord. Dust. Gamma Dust. Gamma Mud, kind of, because it fell into the water. Uh, but beneath where it roughly stood, oops, there we go, rises a creature up from out of the stone. Ah. One arm, and then a second arm, and then a third arm is a is a loud, uh, or not loud, a wide, toothy maw breaches the surface, and it rises and stands there. This strange, three uh, limbed, three armed, three legged beast with a massive, uh, uh, rough uh, uh, maw above it. It oh, right. <laughs> hey, uh, From up. For a moment, Silas is like, ah! and then he's like, <clears throat> and it uh, kind of howls a little bit, uh oh, and then looks at all three of you, and starts to advance. What do you do? I'll back up a little bit. Okay. Mm. I'm going to try to get out of its way. Go on. I'll bring forward. my shield up. I won't attack it yet. Right. It walks straight up to you, Medric. And regards your shield. Uh oh. Hey, are you a friend? Its whole body shifts. Because it doesn't really have shoulders as such. Or it's all shoulders, depending on how you look at it. Uh, it has no real head as such. The whole upper body kind of is the, the head of this creature. As it kind of shifts and regards you. And one of the hands reaches out and traces the symbol on your, sh on your shield. And then it turns, as if disinterested, towards Silas. I nod to it. Hello. Friend. And it kind of slightly it kind of walks closer to you, its mouth kind of methodically kind of opening and closing, its eyes, three of them, kind of regard two of them regarding you, the other one looking behind, still kind of keeping an eye on Medric. Do you have the other eye? And then thinking, I look back at where the first statue was, where everything had gone to dust and then come back. Is the eye still there? Um, you kind of glance over and you can see the glint of the ruby back in its place. Make an animal handling check. Oh, boy. Nope. This thing is inscrutable. I mean, you've seen mm -hmm. some cows recently uh you've probably dealt with horses and dogs and a few other things but this thing seems unreadable you think it might be an animal but at the same time you have no idea what it wants but it seems to be looking for something um who had the stick last was that me or was that you i think Andy? it was me because i was trying to find a place in this one to fit it. Yeah. Seems right. I mean, if it... When I was looking for something... Kind of turns away from oh, you. And starts, oh. starts wandering towards... Oh, you hold out the bowl? Yeah. Uh, it takes two of its arms and kind of clips onto the side of the bowl and kind of moves it and then dumps it out over its head. There's nothing in the bowl, so it kind of just gives it back to you. It gives a little grunt of dissatisfaction. I think I dip yeah, the bowl in the water and then hand it back to him. Maybe. Okay. This time it takes the bowl, dumps the water, and you hear this gurgling sound as it sort of bubbles and, and uh, rolls down its throat. It gives a loud and somewhat satisfied belch. I back away. Uh, and then kind of doubles over a little bit. And there's this... <laughs> as it vomits out. 
two things land on the stone in front of you amongst, amongst uh, some of the, the water and whatever else it had been eating. There's a little cling, 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 as a small gold key rattles out. And then a clunk, 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 as a clear blue sapphire also rolls out. I thank it. And then I swirl those around in the water to wash them off a little. <laughs> it turns feet. it turns away from you and walks up towards Annie with purpose. Mm -hmm. It looks at you, regards you with that same sort of curious twisting of the body that now you've seen it do a couple of times, which you kind of take as a curiosity. And then it does something that none of you probably were expecting. It kneels in front of Annie. Just for a moment. And then it lowers its body into the floor, tears through the floor, and moves into the dirt. Behind it, the floor seems to reform, almost as though with the little glistening of, of uh, crystals within it, that the water and the crystals keep the floor solid and reformed. Does that lower the water level at all? Big, you know, gaping hole in the floor. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, no. <laughs> Almost as oh, though the water oh. and the floor work together. Dang. I'll pick up the key and the sapphire and walk over to Annie. To... It knew you? I don't know why I did that. I thought it was going to hit me. It just traced the symbol of Ignis on my shield. Well, uh, fire symbols were probably not welcome in a water area, but we came in peace. Uh, I'll hand her the sapphire and uh, you want to do the honors? Sure. Uh, I'll go up to this one and where it went in the left eye of the other one, I'll try the right eye. Okay. It slots in easily. Did you put both gems in or just the, just the one? Well, the first gem is still in the other. It is. I was probably try putting the sapphire in the left eye before I went to get the other one. Okay. It slots in easily in both locations. No effect. So. You do I'll, notice I'll as you, you as you pull out the sapphire. Uh, with the amount of light that's here, you can see see almost through it, almost like it's glass or water. It's a beautiful view. It's flawless, in fact. Cool. Hmm. Well, maybe both. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh Ruby in the right and the sapphire, er, Ruby in the left, sapphire in the right. Okay. They both lock in satisfyingly. Nothing seems to change at the moment. This is the one which is missing the left hand and has the right palm outward. Yep. Okay. I will press down on the palm. Maybe put the bowl in it? Yes, that would make sense. Let's put the bowl on the palm. Okay. You notice that the, the arm moves a little bit from the weight. Like the other ones, it seems to be mostly part of a mechanism. But when the uh, fingers kind of move in slightly and press upon the edges of the bowl, they do not seem to respond as you expected and kind of flatten back out again. Hmm. Hmm. Is there another half of that hourglass? Yeah. We'll put that there. Try putting things... Okay. Maybe switch the eyes a bit too. Like, I mean, the eyes don't seem to be the issue. Well, we can try the the uh, hourglass first, and if that doesn't do anything, we could try switching try the eye. Okay. You mm -hmm. put the hourglass in, similar to the bowl. While the fingers do fold a little bit further, the one that is blocked now by the hourglass uh, um, um, stem or the hourglass uh, uh, support is blocked once again. And the hand seems to go limp and flat once more. No change. Hmm. I'll try putting the stick on it. Okay. Uh, it closes around it, 
And for a moment you think, aha. But then as the fingers get close together, it's almost as though the fact that the fingers closed entirely around it was not the signal it was looking for. And once again, it goes flat. Strange. Well, let's try switching the gems. Maybe the key? Could be. Let's try put the everything key. in the hand before we start switching things. Yeah. Okay, so what are you doing? Key. Okay. You put the key on the palm, and once again, the fingers begin to close on their own ever so slightly. They close almost entirely, except this time the thumb blocked by the end of the key no longer pushes upward. There's a loud clicking sound. And the statue and its two bases begins to turn clockwise. The whole thing begins to shift around. Shifts around once, the hand reopens. But doesn't seem to have any change in the statue. Hmm. So the statue basically just rotated on the spot? The statue and its two base elements all rotated together. But you did notice that the, as I pointed out before, the two base elements seem to turn somewhat independently. Um, any, uh, put the key in the palm again, but let me uh, take the stick and I'll stick it in that hole. Yes. Yeah. Once he has the thing where he wants it, I'll put the key back in. So you're just dropping the stick in the hole? Yeah, putting the stick in the hole, and then I'll uh, touch the amber to make it stay. Okay. Just in case. You once again place the, the key on the palm. The fingers close. Yes. The statue starts to move. The middle section of the statue no longer moves, held in place by the stick, as the only the upper part and the lower part move. They turn once around, there's a loud click, then the whole thing turns and twists out of place, revealing stairs down. Cool. Hey. We figured it out. Yay. So, and I thank um, Demetrius for her help. Yes. <laughs> there's no explicit motion or reaction from that direction, but as you kind of glance over, Probably just a trick of the light. But did the hollow socket just wink at you? It's hard to tell. The water runs down the stairs, which are wide and carved of, again, the same sort of marble infused with crystal that glitters and, and gleams as you step down each step. I'm assuming you're stepping down. You don't have to. Oh, yeah. You can just leave right now. It'd be hilarious. Uh, yes. no. Now we found the way in. Let's just take the gems and leave. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to retrieve any of the things that you've placed there? I think we should leave them there. Yeah. Uh, at least for now. Uh, I don't know what would happen if we tried taking them. I, I'm hesitant to steal something from an ancient temple of power. They're not ours to take. I'm just worried. What if yeah. some... <laughs> What if more bandits come by later and find them and then steal them? Is my only worry. Well, the way that this is set up, I think it might be. Yeah. Just... You might what? If you froze. Uh, um, just the way that this is set up, I think it probably resets itself. Okay. You also notice glancing around that the water still is piling up and stopped by an invisible barrier about, around the entrances. Yeah. I'm going down anyway. Yeah, I'll go down too. Okay. Yep. As you step down um, the stairway. Yep. Did you want to do something? I'll go in Okay. As you step down the stairway, it's a little bit difficult in the first couple of steps because water is flowing over the steps. But then a few steps later, you realize that the way that the stone has been carved actually sluices the water off to the left and right, running it down into uh, aquifers, essentially, that run along the sides of the stairs. It descends about uh, 40 feet straight down, uh, as well, a 45-degree angle, a normal set of stairs. Uh, they look well-trodden. Uh, there's signs of wear, but the stone itself seems to be extraordinarily tough. 
uh, and it leads into a crude stone tunnel. It looks as though the stone on both sides are simply pushed out of the way rather than uh, rather than carved out of solid stone. Up ahead, you can see the glow of purple light, strangely enough. Uh, do you proceed all the way down? Silas will. Okay. Yeah, I'll follow. Okay. Beneath you, once again, although the, the stones have kind of been shoved to the sides and creating this tunnel, it looks as though that same stone has been placed in blocks along here, making it a very firm uh, stepping, a very firm walkway. As you move along, uh, small elements of crystal in the rocks beside you start to glow from your presence, giving bathing the whole place in this, in this purplish, bluish light. Not brilliant and bright, more like moonlight than anything else. As you uh, come closer and closer, you can see on the other uh, end of this, this long hallway, this purplish glow and the edges around this, this round opening. Uh, about uh, about uh, eight feet tall, uh, curved, and the edges are all jagged with a purple jagged stone. A purple green kind of. Uh, and as you step closer and closer, you see and find yourselves uh, in a massive geode. Uh, if you've ever seen one of those, basically they are uh, inverted uh, bowls of stone in which gr crystal has grown inward. Um, they are, well, if you haven't seen a geode, they are absolutely gorgeous. This one in particular seems to pulse here and there with little bits of wispish light coming out of the stone. Um, and the large jagged stone, the large jagged crystal from all directions is uh, is surrounding you. Um, kind of as as you cross the threshold and begin to see this Silas and you let out that involuntary whistle, you can hear the echoing sound. There's enough light in here to make out the, the bare shape in, of the space, but it is massive. A geode like this would be the equivalent of a house-sized geode, essentially. Uh, this would be something if it was if it was dug up, this would be a, an entire mine, probably, of its own, of amethyst. Um, at the far end, the glow intensifies as the, as the three of you reach the doorway. The doorway itself is about uh, 10 feet wide, so easy enough for the three of you to stand there and see. From your pocket, Silas, you, you hear, or you feel, rather, Gideon kind of poke his head out uh, and take a look to see what's, what's there. Uh, too curious not to at this point. Oh. Scratch behind his non ears. <laughs> um, as your eyes slowly adjust to the light in here, you see a figure at the far end on a built up slab, kind of the same sort of stone, but built up slab about uh, about two feet off the ground. It appears to be a a creature or a figure. In fact, both seem to fit at this particular point. It is large, about. 10 feet long, you would estimate, in the base. From the main part of the body, it appears to be a lion with, uh, with a, a, a beautiful, tawny hide, uh, a somewhat uh, impatient tail twitching behind it, large limbs uh, sitting in a very comfortable posture. But as your eyes drift up toward the, the, where the head would be of this lion, you instead see a feminine uh, form. Uh, a woman's body on the top of this lion. And the face is a com combination of humanoid and leonid features, uh, fierce and with large teeth, uh, with a mane of hair that seems to explode in all directions, just uh, a, a massive behind the head. Two very strong arms, uh, currently crossed and uh, looking slightly impatient. So, so she's like a lion centaur? Uh, well, the proper term is a gynosphinx. Okay. Um, beside her, as she seems somewhat impatient, and you can kind of, judging from, you know, with a little bit of the distance and judging from the figure beside her, her upper body is about the size of a very large orc uh, in comparison. So if she were standing, she'd probably stand almost 10 feet tall uh, on, the, on the legs of this gigantic lion. But beside her, you see a wispy, uh, blue-white, shimmering figure that grows a little bit more in, in solidity 
as you somewhat recognize Sedona, the ghostly form, standing beside her. Impatiently, the gyna sphinx with arms crossed addresses you. Come, come in. You're here now. Let me take a look at you closely. I will walk up. Yeah, I'll walk up forward towards them. I'll approach as well. From as you get closer again, the scale kind of impresses you and you realize she's looking down on you. The two feet of stone that are holding her up are, are not are not the real factor. She's just that big. From beside her, Sedona seems to be uh, uh, weirdly smiling broadly and almost dancing in place with a bit of extra energy. Is this who you've brought me, Sedona? Are they what you said they were? And Sedona kind of gleefully looks up. I told you. I told you. We would find the people we needed. We just needed to make sure that they could, they could understand and that they were good people. I am not convinced, but come forward. You find yourself standing in front of this, this kind of sphinx. You are welcome. So long as you are welcome. And she paused for a moment, kind of seeing the symbol on uh, Medric's uh, shield, the symbol of Ignis. What brings you here? Why did you come? Uh, Sedona, apparently. We were, right. a, we were help, help, helping a farmer retrieve his cows, and here we are. Sedona fell. She seemed to need help, and we wanted to help her. She seemed she felt tied to here. She could not pass on. Right, she was uh, being possessed by some kind of shadow when we first saw her, too. You see? You see? It's just like I told you. They came because they wanted to help. They weren't like the others who wanted treasure. They weren't like the others who, who just wanted to own everything. They came because they wanted to help. I see. I see. Uh, I would just like to say that I'm not entirely averse to treasure. But uh, yes, you're right. That is not why we are here. The I mean treasure it's just something so we're not starving to death but the gyno sphinx uh, her face kind of broadens and she reveals a lot of teeth and then her head kind of lolls back in this tremendous roar and laugh at the same time at first it sounds kind of threatening and then you realize there's a bit of a chuckle in behind i wish i could do the voice properly to demonstrate that but just imagine this enormous roar and chuckle at the same time of this of this uh, lion-like sound uh and you display some honesty as well. This will bode well. This will bode well in these dangerous times. Hmm. Maybe, maybe you are the people we need. Maybe I can trust you. But you, and she points at Medric, you are mm -hmm. a follower of the fire. Yes. That Is will that be bad? difficult. Is that good or bad? I mean, he's helped me heal other people, so I'd say it's good. He does kind of burn you in the process, though. Yeah, that is concerning. Yeah. Ignis the burning is lessons. Me. I've seen many a healer, and I've never seen, other than Ignis, I've never seen any burn themselves in the process. It happens automatically. The, uh... The, the Gyna Sphinx kind of uh, nods. Ignis's lessons are hard, but he does care for his own. I am only concerned because there will be many who blame you when the truth comes. But... What truth? It is complicated to say. But know this. You are still standing on the side of right. Even when people tell you you are not. I'll nod. Silas kind of just sideways looks at the others going, What are we getting ourselves into? I, I don't know. But somebody mentioned treasure and danger. And I'm more here for the danger, but... The in world, any case, I'm we'll be well compensated. The world is 
very dangerous right now. Unsettled. The changes have not fully manifested yet. And there are those who would take advantage of this time. That's why I'm still here. I should have left with the others, but I remain behind. Sedona, too, although not entirely intentionally. What changes are you referring to? Does it have anything to do with the fact that we don't remember last month, last year? She nods. The war was dangerous and had to be put to an end. All would have been lost if it were not. So changes had to be made. But those changes were large. And they had unexpected side effects. War? Yeah, the war I came back from, but can't remember. Who was fighting? And why? All of Omisha was in danger. There was an invasion like nothing I've ever seen before. Nothing any of our kind have ever seen before. And we've seen much. I cannot tell you all the details. Some things must be forgotten. And that is the task that I must ask you to do. There are still things that remain. Things that are dangerous in the wrong hands. There are those who would take advantage of this confusion. One of which you may have met already. I can sense it on you and the thing that that stole Sedona's will for a time, proves that she is too vulnerable to it to do these things herself. That shadow. Yes. I know not its true nature, but I know that it came in the breach that happened in between. It is one of many things that are out there, searching for artifacts that tie what we took away to this place. They're dangerous. Their presence can help to create breaches to bring more of his kind in. So you want us to hunt these things down and return them to you? That is part of what I ask, yes. There are some things that need to be found. I can describe to you some of what they do, but you will have to find out where they are and where they've been taken. But I respect that you are honest about not just doing good, but also seeking reward. I will reward you. Find things, bring them back here, save the world, get rewards. I'm in. Are you guys in? How I mean, far? To do right now. It seems much more interesting than, you know, going home. How far will this take us from here? I cannot see how far these things have gone. I know that many of them still are close, and that that creature has made a base here, which must be dismantled. But beware, this creature is wily. It will strike when you have not expected it. And it has resources and ways over minds. But there is much to be done here. And she turns in puzzlement to Sedona. I do not know if this is right. They do not fit the prophecy. But I'm, I'm pretty sure they might. Would it help if I was taller? And then I'll look like I'm like a like six six and buff. The uh, the the Gino Sphinx looks at you with some appreciation, uh, but no, your your physical stature is not what is in question. I was told there would be one who swims against the stream, and yet follows the ocean. I was told there'd be one with ties to ancient blood. And I was told there would be one whose allegiance looks questionable. Do you fit this? I fit one of those. Yes. <laughs> yeah. She kind of regards you for a moment. Interesting. I guess we fit this. 
then perhaps I can trust you. Silas does kind of move his staff a little bit behind them. <laughs> if I can help do good, then uh, then I would be happy to do so. Even if it takes you against your own people? Or even if it takes you closer to them? Yes. There is one there I cannot abandon. I do if not know you. Sorry, go ahead. It's, if it's, it's for the betterment of the, the many. I do not know your names. Please tell me how I may address you. I am Catherine. Hi, Catherine. I am si <laughs> no, I am uh, Silas Marsh. Of the Aethwater Marshes? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the Marsh District. Marshes, marshes, marshes. Medrick. I go by Annie. Well, Mitt, I know your names now. I can find you wherever I need to. And there will be other ways for you to come to me. You will no longer need to pass the test. Although, though you did so well, I was asked to, convide, to create that test a long time ago for other purposes. I was skeptical when Sedona said that others could solve it, but I suppose she had some, you had some help. And she kind of looks over to Sedona, who looks a little shy, and you realize now that that statue probably wasn't supposed to speak to you. And yet it did. Well, it, the statue was rather big. <laughs> And uh, also, I was worried about that earlier. What if bandits or criminals get into the temple and steal the jewels? Do you know what happened, or are there wards against that? They can certainly try. Grammatris is waiting for those who try. I'll smile and nod. To be, to be itching for a fight. <laughs> it's been a while since anyone breached that far. It would have been interesting. Not that I have anything against those who are chosen by prophecy, but it would have been interesting to see. Yeah, occasionally it's useful to have one's butt kicked. <laughs> but it reminds people of where they are in the world. I had sensed others who were close to breaching the same area. Be careful of them. I could sense the shadow's presence. Yeah, who's the diamond, by the way? I do not know the name, but if it is the name they have given it, or it has taken for itself, and that is one of the... one of the creatures in the area. The one, probably, who is at the top of the line. It may have already found some artifacts. There are other small pockets of places around. Well, it seems to have a collected a few followers anyway, four mercenaries. We had worried about this. There was nothing that could be done. The war was over, but not all the warriors know that. They can sense that it's not finished. And for you, Medric, you were a fighter. You were a warrior in this war. I know you do not remember, or at least you should not. But... I don't. Do you have any peace, or are you itching for more war? Be honest, I will know the difference. I'm not sure. It is an understood answer. The thrill of battle is exhilarating, but I also 
feel like it's my purpose not only to fight and break things, but I feel like my purpose is also to help people and bring them back to complete health. I guess in war, I get to do both. I fear that you will yet find another war. It will not be simple. It will not be in the open fields of battle. But it will be important. And you will save lives. She gets a distant look in her eyes. Medric nods. <laughs> Almost as though she's she's consulting something you cannot see. I will come to you. One way or another. There will be words or there will be paper. It will transmit what I need to tell you. I cannot leave this place. This is my home. This is my prison. This is my safety, and this is my doom. But you can come to me. For now, I can sense on you much battle and danger. You may rest here if you wish. I will search for the first of things that I need you to do specifically. Or you may return. Sedona may go with you for a while, but as she is vulnerable to the shadow, she should not stay out too long on her own. I would prefer to return home. There are those I must take care of. And we have some cows to bring back. Ah, I yes, just the cows. don't see it right here, and it's really comfier at the, at the end. <laughs> It is not much, and she looks around at the, you know, the jagged crystals which form most of the walls and most of the floor, except for this no, no narrow <laughs> pathway that leads up to her dais. I can make it better, but I understand your point. You are within my realm, and what I request here becomes what I need. In another time, perhaps, you will stay. But for now, I would give you these. And she, uh, where would she keep that? Actually, she would reach into open air and simply uh, stretch her hand out in front of her. And in her hand, a small stone appears. Um, she tosses it towards... Uh, probably towards Medric because you're the larger, beefier of the three. And as it gets closer to you, you realize that it looked like a small stone in her hand, but it's actually about a foot across. <laughs> and uh, it kind of, you catch it almost like a football, and it kind of thunks into your chest. This is unwieldy, I am sorry. And it should not be used too, too freely. But if you concentrate upon this, an ally will come to you. You have already met one of his kind. I believe yeah. as part of the test. Oh, yeah, three-faced guy. They are called the Zorn, and they are sworn defenders of this place. However, do know this, as you are aware, their vision is not to be held for everyone. The common person would treat them as no more than a, a monster, a terrible being. And for most, no amount of words will ever change that. Keep this in mind, that while an ally can also prove to turn anyone who is not already your ally against you, or at the very least, to make them afraid. But with this, you may summon that that, that uh, ally once per day. She holds out her hand again. And in her hand, kind of forming and wisping in curves, in little purple traces that seem to uh, form out of, out of crystalline air, seem to circle and produce... Uh, almost tube-like extensions. Uh, and she kind of draws them in the air and they become real. 
uh, and then they land upon her palms. And this time, she again she again tor- yeah. tosses them towards Medric, again the person who's probably going to be able to catch things uh, more easily. Um, these are lighter than you might expect, and they seem to be woven out of pure amethyst purple uh, crystal, with thin lines of water that seem to run inside the veins of this. These will give you some protection, whoever wears them. They will aid you in what is going to be a very dangerous, uh, very difficult endeavor at times. Once you are known to the shadow, if you are not known already, then you will be targets. All I can do is give you some of my blessings. Uh, and the shadow else. did recognize me. She kind of regards you. But nobody here should know. The the creature, Catherine, kind of looks at you with a little bit of surprise that quickly turns to understanding. Then you are best to make sure that you are all safe and protected. One more thing. The shadow is here? Yes, when I was tying up the cows up front. Dang. Then it has marked you. Beware of that. It may try to harm you. These will help. And one more thing. She kind of stares off in the distance. One more thing to keep you safer. And once again, she begins to kind of weave in the air. This time, there's a silvery line that seems to shimmer and hover in midair. And it, it doesn't feel entirely like she's crafting these things, so much as calling forth them into existence. Not so much building them, as willing them to come here and be here now, as if they existed somewhere in some idyllic plane of, of objects. She calls forward, and it looks like three silvery uh, lines, three, three almost wave-like lines that appear, uh, and then wraps that in uh, amethyst again. This time, it's light, and she tosses it uh, to Medric to catch once again, because... She's the he's the best fetch partner that she's had apparently for a long time. So uh, I have like <laughs> one foot wide like football <laughs> under one arm. We grab the second thing, like put it between two fingers and one arm, and it's like. <laughs> and then the third thing is again very very <laughs> light. The silver within this semi translucent translucent uh, uh, amethyst. Uh, appears to shimmer and twist in whatever light there is from this room and almost seem to uh, provide uh, uh, an illusion or a distraction at the moment. This, too, will help save you from danger. Would that I had bigger gifts to give you, and maybe perhaps I will be able to conjure more things. And as you are able to do the work that I need, Perhaps, too, you can also form the allies that you need to do more. There will be much required. There is something coming. And while we are preventing the widening of the breach, the breach still exists. All we can hope to is not make it worse. But you will need allies. And you will need protection and friends. Maybe even people who work for you. I can supply you with much. Hmm. What this is a long-term job offer, then. Yeah, we went to find some cows, and now we have permanent employment. This is great. <laughs> I hope that you find purpose in this. You will still have your lives. There's much to be done. You, Medric, will still need to study. Ignis's lessons are hard and harsh, but they teach much and provide the power you will need. Annie... Perhaps you will find what you are seeking, but do not forget where you've come from. It will be important. And Silas, where you've come from is perhaps the most important of all. That will be difficult for you, but it will be necessary. Okay. Now, there are material needs you'll have. 
How much can you carry? Quite a bit. Hmm. An okay amount, I guess. I was almost able to rotate the statue, but it was blocked. You know, the mechanism. <laughs> She reaches from behind her and seems to pull a, a leather satchel and just throws it towards you. And it lands with a heavy uh, clink in front of you. Okay. Sell these my hands things. Are, like, you got it. <laughs> yeah. Sell these things. Or if you need to use them, I suppose, you might. And when you take a look inside the satchel, it's filled with about uh, uh, 300 gold worth of Items that would be found in a temple, some with precious gems, some that are made of gold and silver. On their own, they could be sold as art objects, but if they were, they'd be perhaps identifiable or perhaps in a foreign market would be even better. So if you can find the right person, you could definitely sell these for probably about three or four hundred dollars, uh, four hundred gold. Cool. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Should be able to find someone in town that could deal in these be careful they could be recognized to the wrong eyes and while some of you are marked already the rest would be quickly marked afterwards some of us are already marked yeah one of oh. the people that were here earlier is one of my old allies if she goes back to the diamond and tells them who i am then i'm pretty sure i'm marked too old allies once can be new allies again yeah, I suppose we did save her from something. Then I say something, like, note to the DM. I don't want to say I was, um, say don't. <laughs> <laughs> I would you, have you go, then, and dream. Yes, I think I will reach you in dreams. That will be the easiest way. All right, well, thanks for the forewarning. Thank you. You may not realize your importance yet. It will be dangerous. But Sedona believes strongly in you. And that is a vote of confidence for me, too. It is a sad duty that I send you on to some degree. Because I ask you to remove from the world all that I had from joy. But it will be necessary. Now... Some things need to be hidden. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Sometimes we must make the difficult choices for what's better for the most. Wisdom. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Can somebody give him a cough drop or something? Uh, <laughs> I magically conjure a cough drop. <coughs> Sorry, ginger beer. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's not not for breathing. Not recommended for breathing. No. Then you would go. There will be another entrance for you. Nod. Silas, so go pick up the sack. <laughs> okay. It's he'll carry the chair. Okay. Yeah, hopefully we don't get ambushed on the way back again. I am always here. If you should need my counsel, I can give it. But know that my vision is limited here. I know more of the past, and much of that I cannot tell you. But there may be other questions that I can answer. You have an ally in Cathron. And there's something that tingles in the back of your neck, Silas. There's a certain sense of almost a magical incantation when she said that line. Almost as though it was more than just words. You feel, mm -hmm. you feel a little conflict within yourself. Almost as though the, the allyship was somewhat rebuffed. Held at a distance within your, within your mind. Uh, okay, like she was doing something, but it was slightly rebuffed. Okay. That's right. Almost instinctually. And recognized in a different way that you didn't expect. You could sense a sort of magic in the air. 
Um, well, we should probably leave then. We're going to need some time to get back to town. I'll go with you as far as I can. As long as it will not bring you in danger. Yeah. Uh, what, what, what time is it right now, roughly? I'm trying to think. I think it was basically around midday. Um, you've, yeah. been in, you've been in darkness for the last several hours, mind you, because of the, the sealed off room that you were in and now underground. But you can imagine it's probably midday. Okay. As you move back up the hallway, the uh, purple glow kind of fades behind you, and you find that there is a second pathway which has opened up. Again, almost as though stones pushed aside a pathway and it revealed another, another uh, stone uh, walkway. Uh, this one leads up to another twisting stone uh, arch uh, or twisting stone staircase that rises up to a boulder, which is hollow in the inside. Um, and as you pass out, you can see that there is uh, a, a, a movement in the boulder itself. And Sedona points out where different parts of the boulder can be touched and uh, they will respond to you. That's the way she explains it. So it's a, essentially a secret hidden entrance built into a boulder. Cool. Um, as we're leaving, I will ask, um, will the puzzle upstairs, will that reset itself or? It has already done so. It is part of my domain. I figured, but it's better to ask than to assume. I appreciate this. Wouldn't want some of those things to just be out in the open. They serve their purpose, although that may have been the last time that test will ever be used. Perhaps I will dismantle it. It was frustrating, but it was definitely impressive, you know, after having gone through it. It serves its purpose. As do we all. So, back up midday, you find yourself in the forest. Uh, Sedona leads you. Uh, <laughs> wait, you're 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 a follower of the sun god. You're not going to yeah. be bothered by midday sun. If anything, it's like, oh, thank you, sun. <laughs> thank you, life. Uh, nighttime. <laughs> Sedona is to some degree there. There is a freedom that she has which you haven't seen up to this point. You also kind of realize a little bit that part of what she had been portraying was put on. She clearly knows more than she has said and is not quite as vulnerable. But there is still that giddy youth which seems to be displayed in her. She seems to have full control of her form and no longer even makes the pretense of running, but instead is dashing around you almost excitedly. Uh, uh, every once in a while, just sort of swooping up to one of you and holding you by the shoulders. I knew it. I knew it. I knew you would be the ones. You don't know how long I've take, it's taken and how many others there were. But the ones to do what? To help to, us. Okay. To go on missions for Cathron? Has anybody else ever done this before and met an unfortunate end? She looks a little sheepish. Well, there were many that were tested. Only a few that ever made it further beyond the test. But I have a really good feeling that you're going to go much further. And do much better. Thanks. You're welcome. And she kind of grabs you on the shoulder and kind of hugs you. But it's weird because while she has strength over her form, her form is not entirely solid. So it's a little bit of a, of a hug that penetrates the outer shell of your of your being and gives you a little bit of chill around the edges instinctively you feel your body temperature warming up and she kind of pushes backwards <laughs> sorry it's okay just a little bit awkward <laughs> and she leads you back in the direction actually of the Winter farm which is the nearest one to here yeah well we have to go get the cows first but oh right yeah yeah, but, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm assuming we were, we were bringing the cows back the entire time. So. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. You find the cows. 
they're already prepared, wrapped up, and put in the freezer. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> they're contentedly munching away at grass as if nothing has happened. Short-term memory, first thing to go. And you lead them back. And actually, you see that, that uh, uh, Rex is out on the land. He's got the, the cows out grazing. Uh, and is in the process of kind of going through and checking all the cows in the in the uh, field. He's kind of checking, you know, this one's this one's pregnant and it's going to be giving birth in a certain period of time. This one's coming along well. This one has a lame leg. That sort of that sort of typical um, farm work to make sure the cows and and was it cows and sheep are all doing well. Um, he, you every once in a while he calls out for uh, uh, Trevor. But nothing responds to that name. And then you hear, see him kind of curse as you're walking up with the cows, uh, cursing to himself. But when he sees you, uh, you hear him shout from across the, uh, the, the, the field, Ahoy there! You found them! A wave. Yep. He starts trembling over in your direction. Rex is not a young man, but... The dealing with the shadow that happened before definitely took something out of him. And he moves slowly, going across the field. At this point, Sedona has vanished. You expect that she's mostly worried about scaring Rex, as she did before. That Rex makes his way across the field. He's got a large uh, uh, wooden uh, staff that he's using to lean on. It's got a bit of a crook in the end as well. Uh, that that staff looks well worn, as if he's had that for years. He probably has, and you almost get the impression that if you looked closely at it, you'd see where just the wear of his hand has worn grooves into the side of the wood, just from him u- using it for so long. But he stalks up to you. Well met, well met. Oh, there they are. And he walks over to the cows immediately, practically ignoring the rest of you for the moment. <laughs> We found a post in the fence that can easily be removed and doesn't look like it. And that's where they were taking them out. What? Oh, that's terrible. You're going to have to show me that. Um, Yep. Figure out how to repair that. Just let me catch my breath first. I got a little excited seeing you coming in and may have gone a little faster than I meant to. We found the thieves too. They won't be... Hopefully, it won't be bothering you anymore. Well, that's good news. Uh, they went away, but we weren't able to put an end to their li- put an end to their lives or anything. Well, maybe it's about time we hired on some people to stay a little longer. Almost talking about that, we wouldn't normally hire too many people this early in the season, but uh, well, it maybe a few more. It would be a good idea for your health too. You seem to not be able to keep up as much as you might have used to. Oh, well, and he kind of slaps his stomach. I'm as spry as a 10-year-old. 10-year-old dog, maybe, but... uh, (laughs) And he kind of looks a little... has a little noticeable sadness when he says the the word dog. But, um, no, I I should probably hire some folks on to to do the running around. I can can point out where they need to get things done, and I can still, you know, do the necessary milking and things like that, although these hands are getting a little stiff. But uh, maybe I could send you into town with a, a note to put up to, to see if you could generate some people coming in. There's some people who come in every year, but they're not really the, the people I want right now. I need people maybe have a little bit better of a, of a hand with a bow and maybe a little more imposing if they're going to walk the land. You know, the three of you aren't looking for some business, are you? I, you know, you've done a lot for me so far, and... I can't offer you that much. I mean, free room and board for certain, and a little coin from here and there, but... I'm afraid that uh, I believe we've uh, just taken a job. So, uh, but thank you for the offer. Yeah, we'll let you know if things change. Oh, well, that's that's just as well. I can't hire from the top. you got to hire somewhere in the middle and let them work their way up, I suppose. Still, you returned my cows, and that's that's exactly what I hired you to do for the first time, so... Why don't we go back to the house here? Actually, no, I gotta, I gotta see to these, these cattle here. Why don't you go back to the house and just tell Alma to settle up the bill, and I'm, I'm sure she'll take care of it. All right. All right. 
Okay. You sure you'll be okay? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll let them do most of the work. He points to the cows. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, whenever you are, don't be strangers. You can always come out to the farm here any season. When when, when the, the corn is ripe, that's the best time. But we have other yeah. things all year round. And um, he kind of reaches over to the cow, which right next to him, caps over its ears. We also have pretty fine steak half the year, too. <laughs> so, uh, I'll definitely make a point to visit again. Oh, that's good. That's good. And he kind of... Yep. Well, I suppose you need to be going. We're afraid we must. Mm -hmm. All right. Then we can definitely put an ad up for your... Uh, for, for the jobs you have up. Oh, uh, right, right. Uh, tell Alma to do that, too. Her handwriting is so much better than mine. You take care of yourself. You, too. You, too. Don't push your, yourself too hard. You'll worry Alma. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'd never hear the end of it. <laughs> he kind of watches you go. Just... Nice meeting you all, too. Thank you, folks. Thank you so much. And he kind of and starts it to... the cow that we brought back. And... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to name you Steak. Um, <laughs> and and you can kind of see as he's as he's leading these two cows back, the, he is leaning on them. He's actually using them kind of like the the staff he had as well, and letting them do a little bit of the work. Um, remarkably, uh, you, you kind of. For an older guy, his upper body must be extraordinarily strong because he's actually sort of leaning on the two cows and his feet don't have to touch the ground all the time. The cows don't seem to care. You head back to the house. Uh, Alma thanks you. Uh, I got to check to see how much the original uh, the original amount was. Probably wasn't a huge amount. I think it was a couple of gold. Yeah. But she'd yeah. settle up the couple of gold pretty pretty quickly. And I don't actually have the amount written. <laughs> I don't know if it was ever actually mentioned. Yeah. I think there was, but I have it in the wrong page, so I don't <laughs> I don't remember what I uh Yeah, my notes are not covering that. Okay, well we'll we'll say it's a couple of gold. Um, and she gives you uh, each a loaf of fresh bread that she made that morning. Oh, yeah. Um, as well as uh, kind of, well, if, if you will stop to eat, she will feed you. If you slow down oh, at all, yeah. she would probably feed you. Yeah, I don't mind. Uh... I mean, it's midday. We should have lunch. Yeah, yeah you kind of haven't really eaten since this morning. So you kind of caught up to things. Uh, it's before the evening meal, but after lunchtime. And while she didn't have a lot prepared, she does have some. So she sits down for her food. Andy, did you already leave your note? Uh, I'd leave it as we're leaving. Okay. All right. Um, you can expect that there was some some talk. Do you talk about what you saw with Alma? Or do you just say you found the people and cut the and got the cows back? She's curious, but she doesn't press. I'll probably just leave it at that. I mean, if we mention the temple to anyone, it's just going to lead to people going there and checking it out. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah, she. Uh, I would say we found, we found that some some ruins, and. So you do mention ruins. Yeah. Okay. I wouldn't say that it was a temple or anything pretty. It just looked like some dilapidated old building. Okay. Um, she looks at you with a strange expression when you mention the ruins and kind of looks off. No, I don't remember anything being around here, but... And it, she kind of drifts off as though she's trying to remember and you kind of imagine because you've all experienced it and it happens to a lot of people right around now the confusion is setting in 
she can reach out to a memory, but the memory isn't quite there. But there's a tantalizing sense that in that direction a memory lives, or did live. Um, after a while, though, she kind of shakes her head and kind of, uh, <coughs> shakes her head and waves it off. Well, I'm so glad you came. I'm glad we could have helped. And she fills out the uh, the job the uh, the job board post for you guys to put in. Um, looking for hires, um, looking for, uh, hires, uh, actually it's kind of, bandits have been spotted in the area looking for people to protect the flock. We'll pay room and board as well as, uh, 10 gold a season, which is a pretty generous wage. Yeah. Um, after a kind of thought, uh, there's a must come with references at the bottom. Um, if I may trouble you one more thing, you're all going to be in town, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yes. Maybe For there's. A while. If I direct them to you, could you check them out before they come out here? If we're available. Um. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how much will be around town, but sure, for the, if I'm there. And where should I, where should I tell them to ask? What's the name of the end again? The three sisters? The three bells. Yeah. Three bells. Okay. So they'll ask uh, for any of the three bells. Three bell. All right. She smiles and puts that on the bottom of the, of the notice as well. Uh, hand you the, the wrapped up notice. You've been such a help. Well, we're glad. Mm -hmm. We're happy to help. Now, now we... okay. So. Well, I'm, I'm just thinking we won't have anything for a little while, but I'll make sure that something gets sent to the three bells for you whenever we have a crop. Our treat. Much Thank appreciated. You so much. Like two kilos of uncut heroin. <laughs> As the kids like to say, a little bit of blow never did anybody any harm. No. Um, <laughs> uh, thank you again. She seems reluctant to let you go, but at the same time, she's not going to stop you from leaving. Um, and she kind of watches you from the porch as you guys uh, head on out. Um, is she wearing something with pockets? Yeah, she'd have an apron on. Um, I would like to give her a quick hug, and I would like to try to put the note in her pocket. Okay. Make a sleight of hand roll. I'll give you advantage, because the, the hug for distraction. Um, 22. Oh, yeah. No problem whatsoever. Um, she hugs you back very firmly. Um, and again, there's that sense of, I don't want to let you go. But I know I have to let you go. Stay safe. You're such a dear. Uh, and yeah, she watches you as you, you wander at the porch. But uh, very soon she has to go back in and get things ready for the rest of the day. I'll but, wave at her before she goes back in. Not very long afterwards, you've rounded the bend in the road. The, ho the house, the home, the ranch is no longer visible at all. Nothing but trees on either side. This this rutted road, which kind of flows back and forth between the uh, the village and the uh, the outskirts, the numerous farms that live out in this area. You're passed by by a uh, a cart coming back from the village. Looks like they were in town to sell some goods. Uh, looks like ceramics and that sort of thing. About half the the wagon is empty, so probably sold a whole bunch, or maybe they're bringing back stuff. It's hard to tell. They wave as you pass. And you kind of climb down out of the hills. Back. What's that? I'll wave back at them. Yeah, same. Silas, you're familiar with them. Um, there's a, a, a big uh, um, kiln that uh, a family runs. Uh, it's not far from one of the waterfalls out there. It gives them natural extra power source as well as water to use. Uh, they're known for solid goods. Uh, and they have a particular kind of clay, which is very useful for making things, but 
they don't have a, 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 a store in town as such. They just bring in stuff and sell it at the, the markets that are there. It's a little unusual that they're leaving town this time of the day. It's basically late afternoon. They probably would normally leave a little bit later, but it looks as you glance towards the, the water off to your left, you can see there's a bit of a storm billowing in, so that might be why they left. No. Head back in, round another turn, down towards the the deeper area, which is the, the sunken area closer to the to the uh, waterfront where Ilthwater and the, the, the bay actually flows into. That uh, I will cast a quick cantrip and see what tomorrow's weather is going to be like. <laughs> okay. Uh, tomorrow's weather, is that a roll or is that a... Uh... No, it just tells me what the weather is tomorrow. Okay. Um, it's going exactly. to be It's going to be sunny. It is going to rain, but only a light rain. Oh, that's good. I'm assuming for him it kind of shows up as a little illusion of the weather. Since he tends to work through illusions. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Technically the cantrip just tells you what it's going to be. Yeah. But uh we'll work we'll work on that. But yeah, something like a small illusion, kind of kind of like you're conjuring up a snow globe in your hand and it's sort of shaky, 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 and there's the, the illusion in the, in the the round form of uh, you know, mostly sun, the, the the clouds pass over it and dim it for a moment, and then you can see the water accumulating and then it goes sunny again. Pretty nice. Thing. And if you cast it again five minutes later, then it says something different. <laughs> <laughs> he brings it to Canada, it's just constantly changing. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, um, but for the for today, there's definitely some sort of st storm rolling in. It's probably going to clear off yeah. for tonight. And one of the things that strikes you, Silas, it's only because you've been outside of it for a little while, and you don't tend to wander too far away from Ilthwater and the surroundings, that you notice that that rich briny smell of the sea once more. Uh, the tide is high once again. There are boats that are docked up. Uh, and unloading, probably unloading uh, the catch from the day. It's that part of the afternoon where those that were out really early in the morning are are coming in and, and delivering their catch. And the strong mm. smell of familiar area comes back to you. Um, for you, Annie, you, you see uh, the town of Ilthwater. And uh, it's it might be a trick of the light, the way that the clouds are moving overhead. But just for a second... It does almost seem to you like a shadow passes over the entire town and then sort of lingers in a few places and then then the shadow is gone. And Medric, the one thing that draws your eye immediately is that singular flame, the, uh, the spire of the temple, the ever-burning flame. And you get this feeling that I need to check in with the flame keeper. Yep. It's time. <laughs> and with that... Why do people hate us? <laughs> with that, I will bring today's session to a close. And we'll continue with what happens that night soon. Where you go, right, guys? So good afternoon. <laughs> well, it's a little later I, I than that now because you, you stop for some, some lunch and basically you're getting back basically at supper time. Yeah. Uh, well, that was a long walk. We should eat again. Well, you do have those loaves of bread. <laughs> we do. Um, congratulations, guys. I wasn't sure how you were going to go through that test and whether I made it too obscure. But you guys were working <laughs> through it. I did find we didn't really refer that much to the, the riddles. Mm. There were some hidden clues in there and it's kind of um, the... The mirror and the uh, the mirror in the window, for example, yeah. or uh, presenting gifts, that sort of thing. I yeah. mean, th th there was a reason why Gamatrice was there as well as the, if those things needed clarification. There was an opportunity to go, okay, wait a minute. But you guys handled it pretty well, and it was uh, it was I haven't built a, a puzzle like that for a while, so I thought I would see how it, it was also like the challenge no. of doing it, like. Uh, by a video conference too, you can't actually like see things as well. Yeah. Like picture. Yeah. Well, but it was still decent for, for what we're using though. 
I also don't have a lot of props to show you. I was hoping to be able to put together like actual faces. Like, here's what the six faces or five faces look like. And, nope, that's not going to happen. <laughs> that's all right. Well, hopefully we overcame that. Uh, thank you once again, guys, for playing. It's always been, a, it's always, it's challenging for me, but I do enjoy it. And I'm hoping you're having fun with this, this alternate campaign, this slightly yep. dark, darker shaded uh, version of, of uh, Omesha in a very turbulent, uh, turbulent time, uh, time of turmoil. If people want to join in the conversation, I'm really trying. It's not easy for me to remember, but uh, fortunately, uh, Marie is good at reminding me to do something. Uh, I just have to remember to do it. Uh, slowly, I will be catching up on the uh, video. Uh, I have the video ready for the uh, the previous episode, so that'll be going up uh, probably later on today. This video hopefully going on a few days later. Um, but if people want to join in, um, we're going to be throwing as many things as we can into the Facebook group. What Facebook group am I talking about, Marie? We have Watchers of the Drowned Isles, uh, where you can find through Legend of the Drowned Isles, which is our page. Um, it is a closed group, so we have to accept you into it, but you can find it through there and send your, your request. Um, basically, we post when we're filming and stuff like that in the page, if any schedule changes happen. And then the group is more discussions. We posted the riddles this week, stuff like that. Yeah, so hopefully stuff like that will come up. Uh, if you want to find us, uh, you can find us on, if you found this on, on YouTube, then uh, you can go to twitch.tv slash ENCAF1. Uh, we stream generally on Sunday afternoons at 4 o'clock until about 7, as right now. If you found this on Twitch, then you can go over and see the videos that have come already, uh, youtube.com slash ENCAF1. At least I'm consistent in my branding, if not necessarily easy to say. <laughs> uh, and uh, you can go ahead and subscribe to that. What's that? I would also just. Your phone. <laughs> I, I've I've had the the chat for the on Twitch open uh, on my thing and going through like the users that were in the chat. There are six people who stopped in. Well, so. well thank you to thank all you to you who said. stopped in. Um, uh, this is all a grand, crazy experiment. I'm still working with the technology behind the scene, which is why we kind of started a little late today. But if you have suggestions about how things can be done differently, I'd love to hear those. Um, if you're a professional who's done this for 20 years, then I would love to know how you did this 20 years ago when Twitch didn't exist. No, uh, I, I would love to know uh, what your suggestions are about how to make this better. Um, this is a whole different kind of jamming for me. I've played this way before, but uh, hopefully it's working out. In any case, uh, I want to thank you for joining us for more Legends of the Drowned Isles. And we'll be back again next week. Right, YouTube, ring the bell to subscribe. Well, I knew there was something else. <laughs>